guys, welcome to game two. Between Dreamer and Crane, bottom right-hand corner, we have Crane as the yellow Protoss. Upper left-hand corner, we have Dreamer as the green Protoss. This is going to be on Polypoid. So should be one of those more macro-oriented maps. I think this is one of those maps that actually plays really strongly into Crane's favor. I think Crane has that capacity to be the a strong macro-oriented. And really, when he's settling into kind of like that two-gate robo-expand style of play, I feel like that's where he excels. Re uh, Dreamer, on the other hand... I feel like when he is doing exactly what he did in game one, where he's got kind of the reaver stuff and he's kind of doing those coordinated attacks on multiple fronts, that's where he really excels. I gotta say, I love Dreamer's play in game one. Definitely deserved the win there. Shows you why he ended up being the runner-up in Hasu League last season. No shenanigans from either player just yet, just plopping pylons along their main. But at the same time, I feel like Dreamer, I'm curious if he's going to go for more of an aggressive build to not allow Crane to sneak back into kind of a, a macro-oriented style, this map. Also, uh, in particular, seeing this, the success of that Proxy Reaver play in Game 1. Polypoid is a little harder to execute on. Crane sending out a probe scout. He's scouting Wittershins, counterclockwise. He is going to end up coming across... Dreamer's base second. This is kind of cross-positional scouts. Assimilator up for both players, so neither player opting for two-gate, which is standard on this map. <clears throat> that early scout is going to put him a little bit economically behind, but not to the point where it's going to cost him the match. Cybernetics core to follow before Zealot. No Zealot on the opposite corner either. So I do believe that Crane should be able to sneak in a scout before Dreamer, and it is possible that Dreamer is going to be boxed out comparatively. Zealot being constructed. So I think that that earlier scout timing might actually pay dividends for Crane, and Crane absolutely, after last game, definitely wants to get a scout inside of his opponent's base. 7 minutes core coming online. Probe able to wander up, see those Units on gas. It's also potentially might go for... Th there is potential to do Manor Pylon right here. Going to wander around for a moment. Dreamer's Probe coming alongside. Going to get rejected. Push back out. Dragoon is on the way. I feel like this is one of those maps that you typically do see more of the one-gate robo or two-gate expand play. So having this probe in the base to kind of delay that follow-up tech, and specifically to see that cybernetic score spinning. It can be critical. Cybernetic score is spinning for both players. So neither player... Sometimes you'll see players skip range to try to get an early expansion or get earlier tech. Dreamer holding that front momentarily. And is Dreamer... I, I'm not sure if this is a scouting probe or if he's going to go for a sneaky nexus. Something along those lines. But he does have a pro kind of wandering out that 12 o'clock location. Crane, after game one, sending out his Dragoon to scout the 6 o'clock, looking for any sort of proxy tech. Probe coming back to the base. I think wise from both players. Robot, it looks like we are seeing one gate robo for Dreamer. And I think Crane is setting up for one gate robo and to expand. Actually, no, he's, he does have a probe in position to perhaps... Plop down to second gateway. So two gate robo. Take it back. Two gate robo into expand. If things stand as they are, oftentimes with this sort of build, Dreamer will end up with the economic... Assuming Dreamer sticks with this and does go for one gate observatory... Or one gate robo um, robotic support bay into expansion, he'll end up with an overall economic advantage. Crane moving out with his Dragoons, though, towards the front. At cross position. He wants to see whether there is a Nexus warping in or not. He is going to see Dreamer in more of a defensive position, which should give him an indicator that he's going up. And really, he wants to do that to know whether he can sneak the observatory, whether he needs to sneak the observatory, whether he needs to sneak, or whether he can get away with going for a robotics facility first. I think he will opt for... We'll see. Probe dying. Wandering up. 
Minor engagement. Nice focus fire on the Dragoon. Actually, the Zealot able to get on top right there. Crane sneaking around, able to pick one of the Dragoons down. He does have smaller reinforcement point. So nice micro from Crane ahead thus far, but is ending up losing additional units as that Zealot micro paying off for Dreamer. And now he's going to have to back off with what's left. About an even exchange overall. He has gone robotic support base, seeing that Dreamer is positioning for a Nexus. Dreamer on the opposite corner. Already had that observatory out, but he... And he is building, actually, an observer to start behind that Nexus. So Crane will have kind of the, the tech advantage as far as being in a position to do damage. Getting that Reaver out first. However, he's going to be behind in his Nexus after that last exchange. Feeling a little less comfortable with that. He's going to have a superior troop count overall, though. And actually not, not pausing on Dragoon production right here to go ahead and plop that Nexus down. Another probe wandering out for Dreamer to go ahead and get his scouting information comparatively. After that first observer, he's got his Dragoon. He's keeping it at home base just in case there were DTs. And I gotta assume we're gonna see this Reaver peel out and be a little bit more aggressive rather than defensive after that initial exchange. So Crania moving out with the Dragoons he has on the ground, now, now cutting Dragoon production briefly to go ahead and get his natural expansion up. Try to sneak back a lead. What he's going to want to do is do some sort of damage. There is a Reaver on the ground for Dreamer. He has an, an inferior Dragoon count overall, though. Just now getting his second neck, his second gateway online. Second Reaver is about halfway finished. The Observer moving across the map misses all of those units. So if Crane micros this, he could get a big advantage right here. But it's going to come down to a, a bit of micromanagement. Great shot from Dreamer getting that initial Reaver hit, but another Reaver shot landing right on top of his Reavers. Loses the shuttle, but still overwhelming amount of Dragoons moving towards the front. This Reaver Scarab could be huge. Both Reavers getting taken out simultaneously. The second Reaver going to be able to wander down, so Dreamer should hold here. And in the meantime, Crane ended up losing all of his attack force. That Reaver hit was huge. And Crane GGing after that. Wow. So again, I feel like Crane still could have fought this out. But uh, he was going to be at a disadvantage overall. This is where Crane, I guess, sometimes you know gets, gets in his own head. So the Nexus was, uh, was up. His own Nexus was warping in. He was definitely going to be at an ec economic disadvantage. And he was going to have to deal with that shuttle loss. But still, Dreamer wasn't in any position to... Uh, to push in. But anyway, regardless, Crane's been eliminated. Dreamer will advance out of this group. That is it for Group C. We're going to move on to Group D, I think, next Tuesday, if not earlier, depending. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.